it's Scott Orner, Cruise Consulting, and today we're talking about convertible note terms. This is really important if you're an angel investor or if you are accepting angel investor, if you're a startup founder and you're raising money, convertible notes is one of the most popular ways of raising capital. And so it's really important to know what the terms are and you know, give you a little negotiation uh, uh, tips here too. So the first one, pro most important would be the amount. Like you really, really care how much money you're raising. Um, and so you, you see convertible notes from, you know, anywhere from like 25 grand all the way up to like $10 million or $20 million even sometimes when things are crazy. Uh, most seed stage angel rounds are, you know, two to three millions, sometimes $1 million. And that's where you see convertible notes the most. You also see convertible notes in bridge rounds, which I'll talk about at the end of the video as well. So uh, put a pin in that. Uh, but again, the amount is what you're raising from the investors. They're giving you a million dollars. And typically, not there isn't just one investor. There's a bunch of investors coming in on a note is kind of the terminology. So you might have 10 investors who put in 100K each or something like that for a million dollars. But amount's very important. Next up is interest rate. And these convertible notes are debt. And so they typically have a very nominal interest rate, like a small interest rate. Because really investors who are investing in convertible notes are there for the equity upside. Um, they're investing in a seed stage company typically and they want this company to do an IPO 10 years from now. And so the interest rate isn't really that important to them. But like most contracts, the IRS wants there to be an interest rate. and people kind of find. So I, what I typically see is anywhere from like two to four, two to 5%. Again, it's a very nominal amount and no one should get too hung up on this. If you have an investor who's pushing you really hard for like a high interest rate, that's actually a negative signal. You're dealing with someone who's not in it for the equity. You're dealing with someone who wants it for like the debt return, which is a bad idea if you're a venture back startup. You, you want someone who's playing along for the big equity return and it's going to be easy to work with. So that's a kind of interesting negative signal there. The next uh, item is what's called a conversion cap. And this is where the equity component comes in because pretty much everyone investing in a convertible note hopes that another round of capital will come in down the road. So if you're investing in like a seed, seed stage company with a convertible note, you're hoping, you know, a big institutional venture capitalist comes in and does a series A for the company. At that point, your note will convert into equity in the company. And so the valuation cap is essentially the valuation you will be converting at. And so for pre-seed, we see like five to $6 million caps. For seed, it's you know anywhere from eight to maybe 15, something like that. It all changes depending on how hot the market is. But essentially, if you say you put in a million dollars at a $10 million cap and someone comes in and the next, the series A is at like a $20 million valuation, well, you just got a deal. The, the next investors are paying a $20 million valuation and then putting their capital in. But guess what? You get your equity in at the $10 million price point. This is what's super important angel investors. They're incentivized to take risk early on and get a good deal on the valuation cap so that um, when something goes big and does an IPO, they make lots and lots of money because, hey, they have to fund the losses, right? Um, but the valuation cap is probably the most heavily negotiated term besides like the amount. Um, and you know, you want someone who's going to be fair with you. Sometimes I see founders who, you know, are a little too aggressive, especially with fam fam family and friends, like give them a good deal, make it a low valuation cap. They're probably just investing in you because they're, they love and care for you and believe in you. Um, and with professional investors, you'll typically have like one lead, um, who will set the cap in negotiation with you. Uh, but that's effectively the equity valuation you're giving the investors. Next up is common and preferred. And what I'm basically saying there is like, is it does it convert into common stock? Does it convert into preferred? Preferred typically has a liquidation preference, which makes it more valuable. The liquidation preference basically says, hey, we get our money out first um, in the event of an exit, or we have the option to, um, if something good happens, or maybe the company is sold in a fire sale, we still get our money out first. Uh, before the management team. And so that's a way of aligning interest. You know, investors are coming in, taking a lot of risk on the startup. And if they know they get their money out first, it's a little bit easier for them. I, I see convertible notes being both convert to common and convert to preferred. Um, it's always going to depend on if the company has um, institutional VCs. If institutional VCs are always going to insist on it converting to preferred because that's the asset um, and security they like to invest in. 
you know, angel investors, high net worth individuals will be okay with common. There's one little curveball on the conversion cap, which, you know, when you, I don't want to get too into it here. I have another video on it, but oftentimes when you do that conversion uh, and you're converting at a lower valuation than the series A or series B, whatever value, whatever rounds coming in, they don't want to kind of double or triple up on your liquidation preference. And so they'll give you uh, part of the shares in preferred and part of the shares in common. So it's a little inside baseball thing. I'll talk about it in another video. Uh, just important to know you might get a mix back, especially if the valuation on the next round after you've invested is really high. That means you got a really good deal and so you'll get a mix of both of those. Uh, next item is length. I typically see 18 months, 24 months, something like that. Ideally, you will have, as if you're a founder, you wanna negotiate the longest length possible. That just basically means like, hey, the note doesn't come due until 24 months, 30 months out. Investors, usually again, they're investing for the right reasons, investing for the equity upside. So they'll be fine with that. If you have someone who's pressing you really hard for a short term uh, length, because you could be vulnerable, and this is why one of the why safe notes were invented that don't really have a, 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 a time period, um, you can be vulnerable to an investor who's not very nice if your note comes due and they dem demand the cash back. And so you want that time to be pushed out as far as possible. Practically speaking, almost every good angel investor will just extend the note when you need it. Uh, but that is a little bit of a, it, it can be a gotcha if used uh, in a negative way by people who aren't aligned with you. So just know you want the longest length possible. Um, now, so those are the big terms for seed stage, series A investing. Um, sometimes you see convertible notes done in a bridge round. And a bridge round is typically like a company that's raised institutional VC, series A, series B, series C that's doing okay, like it deserves to have more capital, but maybe not strong enough to raise more outside capital from a new lead investor. And so the inside investors will typically bridge the bridge the company and give it you know another six to 12 months of cash. They will typically use a convertible note to do that instead of putting more equity in because they the way they're thinking is like, you know, it's hard to determine what the valuation is right this second. So we'll do a note, we'll, we'll uh, it'll typically convert at the next round price but sometimes they get some warrant coverage on that so a little extra juice on their return sometimes if it's a negative situation they're really kind of don't want to do it they will require that convertible note um, uh, bridge to convert at a at uh, a liquidation preference um, that is a multiple which you don't see too often but it might be a two or three x multiple when it converts and that basically penalizes the founder it makes it hard to to get a good return for the management team or the common shareholders when that's happening. So just know that, you know, if you're in a bridge round situation, you're gonna see much different and, and probably more negative terms than you would in the seed round. So I hope that helps. Convertible notes are a great tool for fundraising. Very, very common. It's either convertible notes or safe notes for early stage companies. And we see it, we see a mix. It's probably 50-50, maybe 40% convertible, 60% safe. So hope that helps. Hit us up at cruiseconsulting.com if you have any questions. Thanks. Thanks.